All right, our Greens family, this is Bomani Tamba and welcome to our Africa for the Africans tours conference call for November 6, 2022. And family, what we're here to do is just um, talk about all the schedules and details that we have for our upcoming tours and then just open things up for questions. So what I wanna do is just go right to screen sharing as I talk with you because I, while I'm talking with you, I wanna just point out where certain things are and because we always have an issue with uh, people being clear on details. So try to get into that first and then we can just uh, expand on certain dialogue. Uh, so hopefully everybody that's traveling with us uh, coming up in uh, November for Tanzania and also for Ghana in December is excited and ready. And one of the things that we do have taken care of is uh, all of our actual flights. Uh, uh, so that's one of the main things that's always uh, taken care of. And while we're dealing with flights, the main thing I wanna let everyone know is that uh, when you get your flight email, uh, just log in and check it, confirm, make sure everything is good. If you need to change your seats, if you need to add meals, any of those things, it's your booking. If you need to add your frequent flyer mileage, uh, those are things that um, you know is, we talk about. So. Uh, Everyone, 100% of everyone that's traveling with us for both of those tours, uh, make sure that those things are clear ahead of time because uh, we can't do, it's your booking, so it's between you and the airlines, um, especially when the time has gone by. I look over everything, but you know, even though I look over everything, it's still your name and your information. And all the names and everything has to be matched up with your passport. So that's how we keep it simple and make sure it is organized. Right, and for uh, screen sharing, we'll go directly to, all right, let's, let's change. And we go directly to our website, africafortheafricans.org. And there's two different versions. There's a desktop and the laptop version uh, that's where you're going to see the screen the uh, slideshow and also you're going to have the audio uh, which i have turned on mute and if you just want this uh to see this the you know, the website without uh, these things you can use your tablet or you can use your phone and then that version is completely different i, I removed the slideshow and the uh, audio player because on your phone and your you know, your tablet, it's you're you're limited on you know these things. What you want to see is more information. But your desktop is so big, you just as soon as you slide down past uh, the present the audio and the uh, slideshow presentation, it goes right into where you see all of your documentation. The main highlight on our main menu is the Black Star Repatriation and Pan African Community. And beyond that, everything else below it is all about the tours and then all of the uh, supporting documents. And this is a different designer website. I just put everything on the main menu. So you're gonna see the tours themselves directly versus just having one icon that say tours. And also once you just flow down to the, once you flow down to the, the main part of the front page of the website, you'll be able to just uh, see all of the links and I'll go through them with you little by little. So you can either click on the, from the main menu or the, the link here for the relative tours that you're looking to travel to and then just get right to the point, show you the uh, full tour package. And uh, it's a subject to change based on, you know, mainly the airline um, prices. So things are a lot different in the numbers from a year ago.
And so once you click on uh, these links, the main thing I want everyone to be clear on is the tour overview, the itinerary, the general terms, any relative visa details. And then there's a preparation and departure list, which I'm gonna click on one of them and then uh, go through. Uh, just to give an idea of this, a summary of the preparation that's put together uh, from a list of one to 30. And I do my best to just keep updated with them, but I, I try to change things on those lists as time go along, especially on different up, upcoming journeys. And also while we're closer to tours like Tanzania and, and Ghana, uh, for Tanzania, we've already had a private uh, tour, which is specifically with people that's traveling with us to Tanzania. And if time permits, we'll have another one, but it's the same thing we have set up, uh, usually a, a few weeks or within, the, within 30 days of traveling, we just usually try to set up at least one or two direct uh, private Zoom where you introduce yourself and we just go specifically through uh, the, the schedules, the details, and hopefully by then, you know, people are clear on things because, you know, you can also just give final updates. So that's what uh, we've done. And uh, we set up the same Zoom to do the same thing too. So uh, the Zoom is just for all of the tours that we have. And then we have one also separate for, if you look into, uh, you know, join our Black South Pan-African community just to give people an idea of, you know, what we're looking to build in the future. And it's just not just, uh, you know, tours in this, making our way back and forth to Africa, but uh, using, you know, using the energy to literally just build an enterprise to, you know, to the highest level to where we can operate all the business and things we do. Uh, you know, in, in Ghana versus here in America, which is, you know, which is something that you have to plan out for long term. Also, while you're scrolling down to the main part of the website, I just have uh, this relative uh, links and this clarity as far as this uh, upcoming conference calls. So this just give a list of all the conference calls that we have for this year. And it is basically broken down anywhere from between four to eight weeks based on how we can schedule conference calls. All right, this is a link to the newsletter and the newsletter is just what I have to just send out for any specific country or just information that we, we share based on Africa tours and investment. That way, that way we just keep people updated or interested who have you know, reached out to say they're interested in traveling doing business in Africa. And sometimes it could be immediate and sometimes it could be five, 10 years. Uh, so as long as people want information, we have information and details. And I do my best to just keep everything that we have updated. And as I go to Tanzania and in Ghana, the goal is to just get more updated uh, videos and pictures and just flood the network with it. And just show people just an incredible connection and keep the momentum going. That way we can just, you know, make the best of it, especially when, you know, when we may come up on, you know, a jackpot, like, you know, if I, I tell people if they hit one of the mega millions of Powerball, we know exactly what to do with the money nowadays, you know, uh, before we would blow it now, we know we need to invest it into black African infrastructure. And we have a whole continent that we can develop and we can build this future ent enterprise. But um, whether that comes true or not, uh, we still have an option to, to do those things based on corporate economics. So, the tours we have you know, opens you up to this different parts of Africa. And as time go along, the goal is to just build more energy there so we can help more people live, do business, and eventually get into the, the world of real estate like we're doing in Ghana. But uh, it, takes, um, you know, it takes time and it's something that has to be processed and you have to just have the right people in the right country and the right energy in place. And some of these things are gonna be on the newsletter. So I'm gonna skip through a lot of the newsletter and probably just go right to the topic list. But this is a link to all of our social pages, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and then the Facebook group page for all of the tours that we have coming up. All right, and the last schedule I added was our Rwanda. So I just, I do have a Facebook link on the link, but I just need to add it to the website, but it's on the newsletter. And then from here, what I showcase is just the 16 years that we have traveled to different parts of Africa. And just to just let people know this is what we do. And it's, it's something we just you know, make happen. It's not the simplest thing. And I'm not trying to make it look easy because it's not easy, but it's something that has to be done uh, in order for us to just build what other things that we need to build in Africa. Uh, this straight, this 
you know, building public relations, networking, connecting, create op creating opportunities, and all the energy of all of us traveling to the African continent. Trust me, family, it has made a difference. Uh, it has made a difference how we're perceived. It has opened up opportunities for people who normally wouldn't get into business, and then it has created an energy of what we have always been pushing, which is for more of us to, you know, support, build Black-owned business, and build a strong future for you know for our children, and making it, you know, create ways to show people, hey, you know, we don't have to be a one-sided people. We could be a global people. We could be a people all over the planet, creating business enterprises and doing business, with, you know, with each other around the world, and. Uh, some people say, you know, people like myself is dreaming and, you know, maybe I'm dreaming, but it's like, what do you do when you're, you know, when, you know, you look at the rest of the world and you see everyone else, you know, enterprising and, you know, doing what they're doing. Yeah. So that's why we always reach out to the strong energy of our people who just open to traveling to Africa, open to doing anything and say, hey, I can be a representation or we can be a represent energy in Africa uh, as far as Africa for the Africans. So that's what we built our business for to build a strong connection between, you know, basically Black America and Black Africa or the African diaspora and African continent. And as you scroll down, what you're gonna see is less tour per year because over the last few years, we have expanded into different countries and different, and different uh, time frame of doing tours. And that in itself even took a long time to do because you have to work these schedules and you have to be able to just handle them and keep up with them. And so most of all these schedules you're seeing is during the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic era. Uh, just to show people that you know, we're resilient and the, the goal is to keep, you know, keep energy strong and let nothing stop us. So unfortunately, certain things in some countries are a little different from when you used to travel five years ago. But uh, what we do is just try to read up on all of the updated information, uh, reach out to our guides and they usually just read the travel advisory and then get ourselves prepared for the journey. And so far, so good. So altogether, this is well over 30 journeys uh, covering seven different countries in Africa and one outside of Africa, which is Brazil. And so people ask me, why don't I go to Brazil anymore? I was like, I can go anywhere. It just all depends on the interests of us as a people. But I do remember going and you know, sharing all the documentation, all the energy and updating a new schedule fresh for the next year. And you know, just like Ethiopia, it just didn't work out. So, you know, we just keep it moving and if a group of people want to reach out to me at any time, for us to go anywhere, that's what we do. We, you know, we have the connections in the different countries and we have the know-how and the organized game plan here as far as business administration to get everything just nice and organized and then get everything online and you know, make the journey work. But the schedules that you see are the schedules that have worked over the years and Ghana has been that main schedule. And we've had groups from anywhere from, uh, from eight all the way to 42, 43. As family, let me speed up and then I get right to the newsletter and we just go through some of the topics. And these are the foundation journeys right here. And that was eight of us in 2006, December, and 10 months later, it was 42 of us, uh, which is the second biggest journey. The biggest journey we have, I've had was uh, Ghana, November, 2017. And now, as you can see, the numbers of you know, our group, since we have more tours, it's less people. So now you look at it, uh, group size of anywhere from 15 to 20. Uh, so, and then we fit perfect in a Toyota Costa. And if we have bigger, you know, bigger group over you know, close to 25 or more, then we can just get one of those big coach bus, but um, we can get as much people as up to 45 on a big coach bus. So the numbers are, what, how we move is just based on, you know, the numbers of the, the group. So uh, we just, and we just make adjustments. So the good thing is, you know, we have had incredible experience of all different size groups different countries and we're just here to just keep stepping it up 
And as we build more energy, you know, we just use those investments to, to build, you know, business in, in different countries and especially here in Ghana where we can just we just operate from you know, Ghana. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful land we have laid out and you know, we have the land for the business center. We just gotta get to work and build it. Uh, so looking forward to have a new headquarters where we can operate 24 seven and operate where we just have a whole entire staff of people that you know, you're training, training uh, young minds to get involved in uh, these kind of business, business administration and technical administration. All right, so this is the conference call newsletter that was sent to everyone. And this is our last Ghana group and then our last Tanzania group. So we'll be back again for another wonderful journey. And looking forward to this uh, Senegal journey. Uh, didn't get a chance to do a journey last year. This uh, did not have enough people, but this year we have a nice group of uh, 12 people and looking to add a few more. And so we are ready for that Senegal journey for March and April of 2023. And so this is a link I have here for all of our conference calls. Um, I just have a designated playlist that I've created a long time ago. So even if you go all the way down to the bottom of the playlist, you see it, you see the different ways that we used to do conference calls and different uh, platforms. Uh, so it's a combination of you know, podcasts and Eventually, we just move to YouTube where you know you, you do a Zoom or something else and then you just upload it to YouTube. So this playlist has just to show the consistency of this, uh, us making ourselves present uh, to just go over details and just you know, connect with new people and just share presentation. And that's all we really have is just a whole lot of presentation. When someone is clear and they're ready to connect with us, you know, they just connect. But we show enough of everything that uh, we do to where everything is clear because it's a journey where it's a whole lot going and it's a schedule where you just have to stay on top of everything. So, you know, you need everybody on code to be clear on how to move and let, and people have to understand that you know, we're, we have a schedule for you to you know, be ready to get on the bus. We do our best to reach out to you and see if you're somewhere, but you know, we want people to flow with the schedule and, and listen to the, 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 the breakdown of everything that we have to do for the, for the day and what we're going to do tomorrow. And then we have digital uh, tour books and, and sometimes uh, depends on the country travel to we'll print the books out. Uh, so you have the schedule, you know, right at your hands, and also you have right on your phone, and we also go through it. And then you know you have details up front because the schedule that you're traveling on is usually not much different from once we finalize it. Usually the last ten to fifteen days because you have to just look back to see if anything has changed or you need to change anything or you need to reroute or move around. You know, you know, move around, move, move certain things around on a schedule throughout the uh, day, daytime. Uh, so all of those, so by the time you're on a tour and you have the book, you know, what, what you see in there will be exactly what, how we move because the schedule, you know, we create our schedule and we, our goal is to follow the schedule and make sure we complete 100% um, of everything that we have on a schedule that we confirm we're going to do. Uh, so what I try to do with that also is just make sure that we have the, the video playlist on YouTube of everything that's actually on the schedule. Every site that we go to, we have a video or, or, or many videos. So we have lots of updated uh, schedules coming up um, to Ghana, Tanzania, Senegal, Gambia, Liberia, South Africa, and Rwanda between 2023 and 2024. So for those who are interested, that's the link um, for payment options. And you can also just request any of the thing I have, uh, you can just request it via email. And also that this link does take you directly to the website. So my goal is to always have 100% of the information on the website. All right, so this is the same uh, tour schedule link uh, that we have on the uh, website. And the goal is always, for that, you know, for anyone that's interested in any of these schedules, as you, as you can see, the dates are there, um, and these things are just really planned out. I, you know, took time to to work on it. You know, that's what I do: web design, administration. So everything that you see, I make sure it's updated. And if I see any mistakes or any typos, or anything, or someone say something is not looking right or clear, it's just uh, updated. So we start off um, the next journey: Tanzania, November 17th to the 28th. And then after that, uh, come back and then it's gone in December 24th to January 5th. 
So back to back holiday schedule. And then uh, we return back to Africa during a spring break time frame, Senegal and the Gambia. So that's two incredible countries uh, on a nine day schedule. And we still have plenty of room. And that's uh, once I complete these two journeys, going to have a whole lot more focus on that journey. And for those who are traveling with us, the main thing is make sure that uh, you receive the visa email so you can start working on your visa. Um, that way you're clear about everything. So when you process it uh, three to four months, uh, you're, you're ready. Then uh, what I've done is just adjust the Ghana schedule for May only, uh, which also give us time because it's summertime to just stay back longer and work on a few things. Uh, so that will be uh, my annual Ghana journey and December will be, you know, we'll be doing South Africa. So after that, uh, another summer uh, journey, uh, Rwanda. So we'll see how this work uh, July 20th to the 30th. I've been just reaching out to a lot of people on it. A lot of people showed interest. So we'll see how that go. And with all these schedules, you just have to see how they go. Uh, the one schedule that I've worked consistently is Ghana, Tanzania, and South Africa. Uh, all other countries are looking to see how they do in the market based on people's interests, but all schedules are much better than the other countries. They're built to where it's more luxury, it's more, it's more laid back time and things are more spaced out. Um, and then this will be our fourth uh, Tanzania journey, Tanzania, November 16th to the 27th. Then we'll come back and um, we'll be hitting South Africa and looking to redo our South Africa journey. Last time we was in South Africa was December 2019. And we was trying to go back again, excuse me, November 2019. I was trying to go back again to November 2020, but that was in the pandemic era where we literally just limited. And so Tanzania was one of those countries that was open. So we just changed it to Tanzania. The goal was just to find a country close to South Africa based on, you know, based on the flow of the schedule and Tanzania ended up being that country. So that's how Tanzania got on there. And then Liberia and, you know, and, you know Liberia is a, a country where my good brother, College Genesis, where we do an incredible program called Pan-Africanism Towards uh, Nationhood, talking about how we can just build a global black business pipeline and just invest our energy into different countries and just you know, make things work for ourselves and connect more with our people to do business. So uh, Liberia is one of the projects that uh, we're working on uh, we have a nice accommodations in Liberia, and by 2024 turnaround, you know, we'll be able to just know more about the future of Liberia. Because, uh, you know, these are the years where all the different countries are you know, having elections and things. And you, know, you want to see stability and consistency you know, where you go. Uh, so, you know, countries come on and off, uh, but this is the best we can do as far as a, a schedule of several countries, uh, which is, you know, which has been you know, adding countries over the years. So as time goes along, we'll keep on working on new schedules. And the next schedule to add on there is, is Egypt, October 2024. And that's if everything work out. Uh, so that's another schedule we're working on, waiting for our partners to send me what their idea for schedule is. And now just modify and adjust it based on how we flow and do itineraries. And this is a famous video link right there for YouTube and Facebook. And it's over 3,300 videos on, on YouTube. And that's from the many countries, uh, presentations, and they're showing all aspects of this life, including business and investment conference. And the same thing with Facebook, you know, just galleries of photos and photos from different countries to show people that this is really us in Africa connecting and enjoying ourselves. And that's our last time in South Africa. Uh, so what I have here is a topic list, and I just usually breeze through the topic list to speak in general, because what I want to do is open things up for us to really just talk about this for people to ask questions. But I do want to go to one of the preparation lists. I'm just seeing if there's anything here that I need to just go over that we didn't go over already. So let me get back to the website, and let me click on, let me click on our Ghana tour for December coming up. All right, so these are all of the files laid out. And this is the same thing 100% for every tour that we do. And I just created a, you know, my, my own format of just how to share information in this, kind of let people know how to view it. So you got the visa overview, general terms, itinerary, 
and there's a mistake on you I need to fix. Right? Improving your immune system, Ghana language translation, and departure reminder list. So what we're going to do is click on departure reminder list, and I'm going to go through it. And I do need to also update it. So the main thing that, the, that I have on this list, and I have this for every country, and the goal is to put as much details in it as possible to just give you clarity of just what the pack, bring, organize, be prepared for. And, and this also being a summary of the things we have covered. So the main thing it's saying is this, uh, you know, the link where all of the details is. So again, the main thing everybody needs to just be clear on is the, uh, the full itinerary, the tour overview, and, and, and note that it's almost little to no adjustments based on the tour itinerary that you receive. But um, you know, we if if anything changes, you know, you're updated in the private um, video conference that we do or ahead of time. But beyond that, uh, that's the detail that we just have, and it's easy to keep those schedules the way they are because you're used to doing the same schedule. And whatever adjustments you need to make, you've already made them already. This will be our 22nd time going to Ghana. And I've changed that itinerary a ridiculous amount of times and modified it to where you know, we have a nice format. And the format is uh, four days in Accra, three days in Cape Coast, Elmina, and then three days in Kumasi. And then if anyone ever want to stay longer, you just let me know ahead of time, especially before we finalize on tickets. And then I can change your return date and you can just take care of whatever you need to take care of. And if you need to get to the country ahead of time, that's also a simple thing to do. Uh, so those are the flexibility we have. And then if you need help or connections to, to get to another country and things, you know, we can uh, work with you on that. Uh, so these are the things we try to do just to make sure people get the best out of their, you know, their getaway journey, their reconnection journey to Africa. Because uh, different people are in different situations. Some are looking to this visit uh, on a one-time base. Uh, some are looking to go back and forth. Some are looking to this live, do business and explore and just open their mind up to this, the future. And one of the things is uh, we collect $50 in gratuities. Uh, so that's, uh, we usually collect that at the uh, airport or, if we, or in Ghana, based on this, how our schedule works. Because sometimes um, some people come behind or ahead. Uh, so the breakdown of that is uh, what we put together to, and I'll just explain it since I have it in uh, writing. Right. So prior to departure, Africa for Africans will collect tips for hospitality services that will be provided in Ghana, and then this is also for every other country. Uh, this amount is based on the number of confirmed tour participants. Uh, this will serve as a separate charge for the tour and will be collected on the departure date upon arrival at Atlanta uh, or whatever airport that we are meet up at. And the total per person is uh, $50. Uh, this will allow us to expedite services. You can also give additional tips to anyone who you you feel give you great services or whoever you choose. So example, if you feel like you just wanna give something directly to the tour guide or the driver or whoever we have, that's up to you. But what we have, we collect, we break it up and we just split it up throughout the entire journey. All the people that are working with us and accommodating us as best as we can. Uh, that way we just have something already set to where you know, we give. And then in some cases of people who are just working for us, then that's an addition to what they have for pay and things like that. So that's how we have that uh, broken uh, down. So the $50 represent basic tips for all Africa for Africans um, staff, including drivers, guides at all sites, hotel staff, entertainment. And, and then it also say that all other services or things like that is just uh, up to you. So just uh, you know, doing something to keep it uh, simple. All right, so I always recommend um, whenever you come, just, um, just don't, don't come with a real romanticized notion of this, any of the countries you come into. You know, it's a real country, real life, real people. Um, and you don't want to be trying to let people know that, you know, you, you know, you, you, you know, about, you know, about what you have or, you know, or try to just be too flashy in front of people and things like that. You know, just tell people to come there, humble themselves, enjoy yourself and just, you know, carry yourself and move nice and smooth. Um, and then also tell people that, you know, none of us need to be 
moving around with a bunch of uh, jewelry and a bunch of just anything flashy. Not saying that you can't wear the stuff because you can, uh, but was trying to just that, you know, all of us know we were going to countries that, you know, you're going to see a little bit of wealth, poverty, and a little bit of everything. Uh, but, you know, we want to come and just open our energy to where we can just connect with people and we don't feel like we're above people and things like that. So, so far, all the journeys we have done, you know, the people in different countries, they appreciate us coming, doing business with them, showing them love and connecting. So it's, um, it's something that we just want to keep on continuing. Just ask everybody just to show, you know, show nothing but love. But if you do run into issues or people just giving you a hard time or if you have problems with people, just you know, reach out to me and let me know. These are the people that we're always around for all of the countries. So it's, it's an easy conversation to talk with them. And trust me, it's something that we have been through already to where, you know, it's a problem solved. And as we do more private calls and when we, you know, get to the different countries, you know, we can talk more into details on more of certain things like that and how to move around and just, you know, focus on this, enjoying yourself. And we talk about the um, yeah, e-tickets. So most of the tickets that we do is on Delta um, Airlines and also on KLM. And, and you know, in the past, uh, United, uh, when we went to Ghana back to back the last uh, two times, but uh, all the schedule that we have, uh, especially the next uh, three, or I should say next four is just all on Delta KLM. So log into Delta KLM, however you got your ticket, uh, sometimes it's booked directly through Delta and sometimes directly through KLM, but uh, they have a full partnership. So some of your flights may be on Delta, some of your flights may be on KLM. Uh, so if you just get used to logging into both uh, websites, and checking out your, you know, your flight details, and you make it simple. And then always recommend for any one of us that's traveling, uh, the sign up for Sky Miles. Um, I remember just doing mine over the, over the years and is, it is just added up to where, you know, sometimes you turn around, you have enough mileage for a nice round trip uh, in the US and you know, you're gonna save your, you know, save your money. Uh, but also it add up to certain perks if you, you know, you consistently fly. So, what we have is, you know, it's not bad. Um, the basic, uh, a nice uh, Delta perks from using our Sky Miles over the years, or, or just keep on adding our Sky Miles every flight. Another thing too, if you're using Kalem website and it's just acting strange, then you can use Air France website. Their website is completely 100% interchangeable. The same information you see on Kalem, the same information you see on Air France. Uh, they have a network together. So that makes up the Sky Team along with Kenya Airways. All right, so one thing I always recommend is make sure you just uh, print your ticket, make sure you know, save. Now you already have it on email because we sent it to you via email, uh, but just save your information, print everything out, the ticket, your, and have your ticket, your passport, um, anything that you need, like in Tanzania, you have your domestic flight ticket, just print that out also. And then in Tanzania, you get to print a visa because it's sent to you via email. Uh, you just put everything in your package and you're ready. And just you know, keep that simple and get that out the way. And then the main thing that we need to process is just our movements on the ground. And so by the time we travel, you know, everyone should have all these things verified and um, that just hopefully no one have any issues. Uh, but be clear about your login and be clear about that you all have access to communicate with Delta KLM. Uh, they're the ones that, uh, you know, they're the ones that book your ticket. So if you have anything that you want to talk to them about, you, you know, be free to call them. All they need is your name and your confirmation number. And then any changes that you need or anything that you want, just talk to them about it. Um, if worst case scenario and you're having a whole lot of problems, then definitely call me. But uh, note that your tickets are all finalized and they're all your responsibility. And I have your back because I'm the one that uh, booked all of them and made sure everything is good. So I'm not gonna abandon you if you run into any trouble or issues or anything is you know, anything needs to be fixed or if you wanna upgrade and you know, you're having issues uh, doing upgrades. Okay. All right, so uh, we're up to seven. So I still recommend everyone arrive at the airport that you can arrive there much earlier than two to three hours. Yeah. But the next thing is our check back. So with all your flight bookings internationally only, which your domestic flights in America is considered international because they're all booked with an international flight routing. So what you need to look at uh, to just be clear about it is you have two 50 pound check bags 
But if you do anything domestic, which is only in Tanzania and South Africa, you only allow one bag. So be prepared to pay for a second bag or downsize. And I tell people in that situation of the domestic flights in the different countries, we just go by what they go by. And I'm usually prepared to pay for my extra bag and just keep it moving. Outside of that, uh, you can just make sure you have one bag. And if you need to purchase an extra 50 pound bags, it's $200 um, with uh, the Delta network. And a uh, quick note below, they still doing, the airlines are still doing a three ounce. So make sure anything larger than three ounces in your check bag, anything you're not sure about, just put in your check bags and carry on bags. Just make sure that uh, you, know, you have some comfortable carry on because I can't speak for all airports. Um, and I'm a person that walks. So if you look at something like a mile, I would say that's a simple walk, but some people are not used to walking no more than from their house to their car and then their car to the, whatever building they're going in. And we, a lot of us do that. So uh, if you have, um, if you have, just make sure you get something that you can roll uh, when you're actually inside the airport, where if you have two bags, you can put one bag on top of the next and then you just, you know, do a roll on. So what I have is a backpack and then I have a 21 inch uh, upright uh, roll on as far as um, my carry on bags. Uh, and it's easy navigation moving, uh, but I usually see people struggling and I feel bad for them, but you know, I can't help you. Um, you know, and so, just make sure that uh, you don't have to, you know, because you may feel like your bag is light to carry it and walk with it. But then when you move around an airport, you want to have to something on wheels. All right, so in the carry on is, uh, is uh, simple. You just want to carry something, you know, just lights. And the main thing that uh, airlines want you to do you want to make sure that you have carry-on bags that can either fit an overhead bin or under the seat in front of you. And I always recommend everyone this, um, when you're packing bags, just uh, less is better because um, you want to bring back more stuff. So I always recommend just bringing school supplies, bringing things that you want to trade, give away and things like that. Then that way you can free up space in your bag. And if nothing else, you can always you know, do the extra 50 pound bag. At 11, for all of the groups, I'm always just, I recommend this bring a set of uh, whites, a set of red, black, green, and gold. Um, and these are just colors for this ancestral connection, uh, going to the African Holocaust dungeon, or just us connecting together as a group. And then we always have Africa for Africans t-shirts. So the t-shirts are usually in, in, in you know, one or the other color. Sometimes it's the, the combination of colors, red, black, green, and gold, or it's just a white t-shirt. but Nevertheless, uh, you know, I never know what t-shirts we're gonna have. I just usually just rotate the colors and things like that. Uh, but if you just do that separate, uh, when we do it, anything on the schedule, you, know, you just have you know, something to connect with us. And for those who just don't believe in doing those things, don't believe in wearing whites and things like that, I have no problem with it. I'm, I would be the last person to fight you with it because many people have many beliefs in different things. You know? You know, people have even told me that uh, they're not gonna wear white. Um, and things that I said, they're not under your business because white is something. And, you know, so let, let everybody know that I'm a cool person and I'm here to just you know, do our business and accommodate everyone. And I'm not someone that's here to challenge anybody's spiritual, or rel religious, or political beliefs because I got my own. And I just keep it, you know, in a different uh, zone and just focus on what we have together, which is a pan African connection to enjoy, connect, network. And, let our presence from the African diaspora be felt in Africa uh, as we continue to build that connection between the African diaspora and the African continent. And so, to talk about school supplies. So, anything you could really bring, uh, including books, bags, papers, pencils, calculators, uh, clothing. I always recommend black doll babies for the, you know, you know, for the girls and uh, toys for the boys. And the reason why I always say black dolls is because when I first started this traveling to Africa, I went to places that had a bunch of white dolls. You know, naturally I just removed them and trashed them, and I brought back black dolls just to not just just be just oh just get rid of these and not provide a solution. And I explained the solution that it was more psychological than anything else for any kind of black children to be with white dolls and things like that because of just what I've seen in life and experience of just being around people when you talk to them and things like that, and the level of the self hate based on just seeing objects of other people look more beautiful than ourselves. So it's also something we push to this black empowerment, just loving ourselves, respecting ourselves, showing each other this 
you know, support and energy. And, you know, that's why business is called Africa for the Africans. It's just our specific, specific focus, Africans outside of the African continent. And that's when the ones of us on the African continent uh, by our ancestral lineage and or direct birth from the continent. All right, now medicine, almost and I want to bring any necessary medicine and if they feel like it's something that you're going to have issues with, with some of those difficult people at the airport, just put it in your check bags. Uh, cameras, camcorders, uh, bring extra memory card, rechargeable batteries, if you have any electronics, bring a converter, foreign adapters, and an extension cord. So for those who are traveling with me to Tanzania and Ghana, I posted on the uh, group WhatsApp page, which I want anyone that's traveling with us, if you're not on the group WhatsApp page for any of the groups, just reach out to me. And, and then I'll, I can easily send you a text on your, your phone. Uh, but usually I do my best, but once you tell me that you're traveling with us or you lock in, I usually just add you to those groups anyway and, and send you the message. But if someone is just not in one of those groups, let me know. That's the best I can do, especially when we get closer to travel. I don't want to be sending you a bunch of emails. Um, I just want to just you know, send you those messages and then you can check every few days. And then whatever is there, you can always scroll up and then look at it you know, based on the details. So, that's uh, what we have uh, that way when you have your multiple electronics, uh, you use your adapter to plug in any wall fixtures on any of the countries you go to. And once it's plugged in, then you can use your, your extension cord and plug it in. And then your extension cord is universal. So you have all different forms of how you can plug whatever in, you know, in it. So you know, got, send those out as an example to keep it simple. All right, uh, 16, travel irons, alarm clock, plastic bags, Compact, um, compact umbrella, waterproof poncho, and other convenient accessories. Only place that you can bring the um, the plastic bags is uh, Rwanda, um, but uh, that's the last I've heard of. You know, from there, you know, from what they're doing there, which you know, I definitely understand. But the plastic bag is just for us to use. To sometimes you have shoes and you just need to just wrap them up in a bag, and you need to just wrap certain things up that way. You know, you, know, you can kind of space things out and organize it in your you know your bag to where. You don't have dirty shoes touching something else, just to give a good example. Now 17, mosquito spray, repellent, and citronella oil. And just avoid wearing scented lotions because the mosquitoes like sweet smells. And most of these things are, have dangerous uh, chemicals in it. So just do your best to find something natural or what works for you. But uh, in Ghana and Tanzania, they do have a mosquito problem, uh, especially in Dar es Salaam. And, and all of this is just based on experience. So some people may be more vulnerable to this mosquitoes getting them, but this, uh, you know, follow those uh, procedures and you're, you're good. And then at nighttime, what I recommend is just cover your skin as best as you can. Um, and, and beyond that, you know, you should be uh, fine. But a lot of things we do is outdoor, including sometimes we have dinner outdoor. Most of the settings that we have in Africa, you know, provide outdoor dining and, you know, so just want you to be uh, prepared. All right, calculator, you can just use your phone, but uh, the currency exchange, I can't keep up with the currency exchange. People like text me all the time, what is this a currency exchange? And I tell people, just, 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 just think about it. You know, you go into a country, just take your time, go, on, go online and look and see the currency exchange and kind of just process it. Um, this is something, <laughs> it's funny uh, what, of what I'm showing for Ghana, but you don't, for hundred US dollars, you don't longer get, you don't longer get 500 Ghana CDs, you get 1400. So, and this is probably something I was supposed to change last year and didn't change, but that's why I don't bother with exchange rate because some of them in the country, they just change. Tanzania is one of the few I've seen that's always the same. All right, people always ask me how much money to bring. I don't know what to tell people how much money to bring, um, but because most of the tour is covered except for your lunch, your group tips and things you want to buy, shop, or do nightlife with. So I recommend 400 to 800. I always recommend bringing big bills, 50 and $100 bills, because if you bring anything less, you get a lower exchange rate or a lower uh, value for it, uh, which makes no sense to me still to this day, but uh, that's how things go on. Right. And also bring a bank card, Visa, MasterCard, all those things are accepted. While we're traveling, our goal, our goal is to always get you to, uh, to get access to your money every day or every day, every other day. So we just say get enough for at least uh, anywhere from uh, two to four days. I understand some people like to carry a whole bunch of things with them. 
All right, the weather situation. All the countries you go to are very tropical. Uh, with, you know, tropical, like tropical Florida in the, you know, in the tropical times and all the countries in the, the Caribbean, it's, it's just nice and tropical. So it's more closer to mid eighties, more closer to late seventies, uh, mid eighties to maybe low nineties. Uh, depends on the time you go into different countries. But I bring our light clothing, sandals, shorts, walking shoes, sundress, tank top, swimwear, casual slash African clothing for certain nightlife and evening events like business and network conference and uh, welcome and farewell dinner. And so, and then always let everyone know that, you know, wherever we go, you know, there's pools or the beach. And so if you, you know, open to swimming or just enjoying our life, just bring us swimwear. And if not, you can always buy swimwear, the location. As far as the photos, I always just recommend that we just keep it low, especially in the airport, uh, state buildings, government facilities, the American embassies and things like that uh, with the photos. Uh, 22, uh, Travel insurance, I always recommend uh, anyone that's interested in travel insurance to get travel insurance and just look at different policies. Uh, this is a link that we have, Passport uh, USA, PassportHealthUSA.com. Uh, it's not really a recommendation, but this is an, an example based on members I know that have gotten travel insurance. Only thing I'll say about travel insurance, make sure every aspect of what you need is covered, especially the important one, like especially the medical and the sick part. Uh, toiletries, including tissue, soap, uh, napkins, wet wipes, facial tissues, washcloth, beach towels, laundry soap. Now, do you need all of these things? Not really. Um, and you know, you're just uh, bringing anything that you feel like you need without having to depend on just getting to the country. And you know, you're gonna have towels, um, but in some places there's no washcloth. I know sometimes some of us may look at it as weird, but everything differs by the country. All right, I have this uh, 24. Um, you know, this is still for Ghana, but um, you know, this is still in reference to all the countries. All the countries I've been to, and that's why we have the different countries on there. People are very friendly, and it's just that's what I love about Africa: friendly, warm, welcome. Just you know, the hospitality is great, especially when people know you're coming from America, you're coming from somewhere else, and you've never been to their country. They're so happy to see you, happy to welcome you, and everything. But the only thing I would tell everyone is, don't make any quick uh, decisions to this. Do anything quick, whether it's just any kind of business investing in anything, buying land. These are things that you'd have to process for a while. And then, you know, the idea thing I always recommend is that we have people in the country that do different things. We can keep those people accountable, but outside of the people that we have, that we have our networking, we can't keep anybody else accountable. And that's how we've been able to survive and do business in Africa and make move our way around. It's just keeping, you know, keeping things strong in a network and just dealing with people who, you know, is about the same life and business as you based on experience. You know, you know, now the first time you have to trust somebody and you have to do those things, but that's when you really just put things in place. And then after a while, you know, you and this, that person, you just keep doing business, you know, they build relationship, get to know each other, and you know, understand that we're in the same world together as we're trying to just build black enterprise and create opportunities for ourselves. Uh, so those are a lot of my selling points when I talk to everyone this, you know, in a real situation. And, you know, you, and for the most part, you know, people get you because, you know, they see the world as you see it also. Um, and, you know, you just have that real talk with them, that man-to-man -man talk, that brother-to-brother -brother talk, and how we can do things together and make things work. Uh, 25 games for leisure, including uh, social gathering. My favorite is always going to be the deck of cards, the dominoes, chess, and general board games. So sometimes, you know, in the evening, you know, uh, people don't want to go out. You could just be in the lobby. They break out the cards and the dominoes and, you know, get the drinks going from the bar and just enjoy your time and, you know, socialize, get to network with people and, and you know, connect with people. So much of us together as black folks where we just, you know, you just start wondering where people are from, what are they into and everything. And, you know, cause what binds us together is the world of this uh, pan-African interest in traveling and going to Africa and, uh, and also our ancestral reconnection. So it put us, a lot of us in the same energy and, and it makes dialogue a lot easier and, networking and connecting. So that's one thing we, we're good at doing is connecting a lot of people together with people that they've you know, never met before. And next, you know, you have a whole world of new relationships you know, to where we have influenced a lot of people to move to Africa and all this popular energy on YouTube is just, you know, we have inspired people because we're out here just doing it at a high level, trying to say, hey, you know what? Let's get together, let's do some things together. Let's open this world of just us traveling to Africa, connecting and making things relevant for ourselves. 
All right, uh, 26 emergency items, uh, flashlight, basic first aid kits, laxative, pepto um, anti-diarrhea. I'm not saying you need all these things, but just trying to put some things in writing to say, if anyone may need any of these things, just bring it. Uh, do you have pharmacies in the different countries? Absolutely, usually there's one close by the hotel in most of the places that we go. But definitely just recommend everybody just research the safest and the healthiest thing to bring. Uh, 27, please focus on enjoying yourself and accomplishing your mission. Do not get distracted by others or get caught up into complaining. This is, a, this is an experience that will have its ups and downs. It's a part of your introduction to Africa. We recommend you just go with the flow and enjoy your time in paradise around a wonderful itinerary that we have put together on this uh, journey of a lifetime. Right? So people may say, what is ups and downs? The downs will definitely be when you're tired. And the downs, is, you know, you know, and the ups will be just, you know, you just excited, you know, because you're in Africa and we just out somewhere social where we're just having dinner and having a good time. And downs can be, you know, you know, maybe you have an issue in your room and you know, we just have to just talk to the people in charge and we fix it. Um, so, and we just stay positive and we work everything out. Uh, we communicate together and we just, you know, all of us have put together too much energy into not having the greatest time on these journeys. And that's why we go through this because we just want people to know, hey, if something's going on, talk with us. We got your back and everything. Example, if somebody's just bothering you and you just need to get away from this person, it's a, it's a real situation. Somebody may try to be trying to sell you something for the last five days and you just like hit the point where you're like, hey, I'm tired of this person bothering me. I don't want to buy it. And then you don't want to be rude to say, but why can you handle this? Or you just ask the tour guide and we just handle it for you because I go, you know, because we know how our people are that's trying to make sales. It's, you know, it depends on the country. Like Senegal is the worst. Like sometimes I'm like, I'm staying in the bus. I'm not trying to get out there because, you know, you just get, you know, bombarded. And it depends on the time of the day or the time of the week or whatever is going on. It could just be just overwhelming, uh, especially if you've just been traveling and it's just been long days. Maybe we had a five hour drive and you just get somewhere and all you just want to do is take a shower and just get something cold to drink. Uh, so this, um, and then, you know, while we're in the bus, the goal is to always have group conversations about anything that's going on. If we need to do group conversation, anything private, you know, myself and the tour guide is always available for private conversation. All right, uh, 28, to talk about a COVID test. Uh, I have not fully removed this COVID stuff, but for Ghana, yes, like you need a COVID test if you don't have a vaccination card. So you, so you take a COVID test uh, with results of three days uh, negative before you take the flight to Ghana and your departure flight to actual Ghana. And um, while you're there, you have to take another COVID test for 150. So that's what they have. And my goal is to you know, tell people this, once we hit the month of December, I'll check back on all of these things because I really feel like they're gonna they're gonna have to get rid of these things because it's, it's, it's their country is going in, into inflation like nothing else. And people ask me why is Ghana this way? I was like, they can blame everything on inflation and blame everything on um, on Ukraine and things like that. But the reality of it is, when you have a country that's um, you know all current countries work in the aspect of this you know, their foreign currency. So if you just have an incredible tourist base and you just have money coming in and you know your financial people are doing what they do. Uh, your economy is stabilized, but then when you have almost 50% of your tourist base on two big tourist season, which is December and uh, the summertime, and you lose that to other countries because of these, these, these requirements, which it, it puts you in a, a turmoil. So people haven't been going to Ghana like they've been going over the years. I mean, they had a, had a, they've had a momentum for the last 10 straight years between, example, 2010 and 2020. Uh, but now... You know, so, and then, you know, it's other things contributed to that, uh, but that's one of the, the situations because the more tourist people coming in, it, you, know, you know, it creates more opportunities for people to, you know, to make a living. Because I'm telling people when we go to the different countries, you know, you're in, a, you're in an environment where you're spending money with your own people. You're not, not taking you to a, a store that's owned by a group of Lebanese or Chinese. You're going to a craft market that's, you know, the people you see is the people who design it, them and their family. Uh, so that's how we do all countries and all, almost all the hotels, with the exception of a few, is just all black owned. You do your best on that because some countries, you know, it's a straight uh, European world economic domination um, where, you know, 
the bulk of every a lot of things are this own. So I'm also us that they, these are opportunities if we can do that cooperative economics. Uh, 30, and then I'll just stop the um well, let's show one more, one or two more things. Doing the uh, any kind of uh, African Holocaust we have, um, and I took a page out of the um, the white European Jews book about about fifteen about seventeen years ago, you know. And I'm always seeing how they just like you know how they do it, you know where they just push their agenda on the African Holocaust, making it seem like that's you know that they you know that their situation were worse than anything else that the world have ever seen, which is um, which you know. Uh, any kind of um, Holocaust or, tra or or genocide is, you know, it's, it's sad and sick. And the people who went through that, I feel strongly that they should never let that information go. They should, you know, keep it in circulation, just to keep yourself in strength. And for me personally, the people that we, we, we roll with, that is an important part of our connection. You know, it, it's painful as it is, and you know, I've been to like Cape Coast and Elmina over twenty times. And it's it, you know it's still painful going there, but at the same time to give you a level of strength to this, you know, you know to keep a certain fighting energy and things like that. So I can see how the white European Jews use that as a way to strengthen themselves and use that as a way also to, to to just make examples of people that you know they feel that may say something towards them, which um, you know you know people can do what they need to. do. I just want to see us do it. So that's my that's my my spin on it uh, from having that on there, you know, for over a decade and a half. And, you know, so, you know, and that's why we have the wear all white uh, clothing and it's like a nice special energy. So whenever you see us in all whites in any of the pictures, that's what we're doing. We're at some kind of, uh, some form of African Holocaust and we're just paying homage to our ancestors and just connecting with each other in strength and then sharing the documentation of those videos and pictures with other people and say, hey, this is what happened to our ancestors. And we're coming back to reconnect and we're coming back to, to be a part of the future. And you're just trying to just put a positive energy out there. There's so much negative stuff out there, especially just on YouTube, negative, 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 negative. So we're just here to just build a positive connection and just looking forward to this, talking with more people as we travel. And anybody that's open to doing a video or just share the experience, we're always open for that. But I understand some people don't wanna show themselves online. So I respect that. Just let me know, hey, I don't want a video of me out there and things like that. But anyone who does, you know, please just uh, reach out. All right, so I've talked about YouTube. Where is I think my YouTube page has disappeared. All right, YouTube, as far as YouTube, I'm always there. I recommend anyone that's, you know, if you want to see the tours that we've done before, one of the quickest ways to find it is playlists. But I do have also whatever current journeys we have taken, just right there. You don't have to scroll down too much. Um, you'll see it on the multiple playlists. And also, you see the feature Last Journey and Black Star Community. Some more journeys to Africa and some more journeys. And I started these playlists, I want to say it was 2017. So before that is just videos, videos, videos in the, in the uploads. But I realized that the best way to do it is just to create a playlist. That way anyone wants to see a specific journey, you can see the journey. And it just shows you all of the footage that we put together. And most of it is raw footage. So, you know, it's, you know, it's just right to the point. And the oldest video that I have on you online is this uh, my Egypt uh, documentary in 2004. Um, I did a lot of studying for that documentary. So I was well versed in. It was just, it was just a nice experience, and it's just I, I, I try not to play it because it's just it looks so strange looking at, you know, it's kind of like your forty five year old self looking at your your twenty six year old self. It's just like strange, and and just hearing you saying some of the same things, and this sometimes you feel like you know you like you know we've been pushing the same thing and it's like, you know, you tell people, hey, let's come out here and join the party with us and everything, you know, you know some of us are actually committed to a change for our, our future. Uh, so that's been our experience as traveling to Africa and just impacting different lives and just building an incredible network. And over here, I see my, my South Africa journey. Uh, South Africa was a country I went to in 2005. I uh, went, I want to say in May 
and also November. Uh, and those are the last time I was in South Africa until, you know, 14 years later, I did a South Africa journey. And, you know, that was, you know, that was a great experience. I'm looking forward to going back on that. And then I'm even seeing the Brazil journey here. The best thing I like about that Brazil journey, I, just, I was on the beach and I don't know, I just got excited. And next thing I started doing a bunch of beach videos. And, you know, this, and so, and you know, that beach video and energy remind me of this. You know, when I look back at it, I was like, you know, that's how I would love for our Black Star community to, to look at the beach. It's a nice, vibrant beach. It's full of this, you know, you know, full of us as a people enjoying holidays with our family. All right, and uh, Facebook. Once you're on Facebook, you just click on photos and albums and I have nothing but uh, photos that's showing us as real people. And there's galleries after galleries. But nevertheless, family, let me uh, stop um, the screen sharing and let's open things up for uh, questions. You now I can go on and on with the details, uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, information that we all have access to. But the most important thing was to go to the uh, preparation list. And that preparation list is relevant for all tours with the exception of the name, in, the names in it. All right, so family, um, this, um, unmute yourself, ask a question, or say, introduce yourself. Um, let us know where you're calling from, what journey you're traveling on, and your question. Hi, good evening. Uh, this is uh, Zudian. I'm in Atlanta, and I'm going to the Ghana trip in December. And um, I know that I've been planning this trip since the last, last trip, or the last uh, two trips. Um, would there be anything that I need to update since uh, uh, you know I didn't make the trip on in December? Is there anything I need to update for this one for this trip? No, there's nothing you need to uh, update. So as long as you got your Ghana visa and your ticket, that's uh, all that matters, and um, and that's uh, really it. And as I was saying, saying with everyone, once whoever have vaccination cards, they don't have to deal with the COVID nineteen uh, tests and drama on the departure and also on the arrival. So okay. we just are all waiting for the day to go. And the goal is to do at least one or two private calls with the specific Ghana group to just go over um, schedules and any other updated information and just open, you know, open things up for questions and then just keep dialoguing. And then when the magical day come with us all, and follow our flight itinerary, and then we just have a, a sequence of pickups to work on. Okay. Um, and the, the other question I had was, um, do we get our, our currency exchange here or we get it when we go there? Uh, once you go there, uh, we'll, we'll have somebody to change your money on, on our bus and we have someone that's part of our crew to travel with us. And then, um, and then for people in other countries, uh, what we do is go to Forex Bureau or we go to, yeah, the Forex Bureau, but uh, yeah, the Forex Bureau and also when we arrive at the airport in other countries, but in Ghana, we just specifically just have someone with us and we just uh, work it out. So we just, you just be on a bus and we exchange and then sometimes he's at the um, hotel with us and we just all meet and just change our money. Uh, and we do that uh, every, every, every day or every other day. And then for those who need to get access to any uh, ATM machines, uh, we usually just get you access to that also. Okay. I have a question. Uh, sure, go ahead. Catrice Robinson here from Dallas, Texas. So um, in absence of a COVID vaccination, as you know, right now, you can still opt to take the test, the COVID vaccine test. Because when I went on to the websites, the consulate websites, there's conflicting information. Uh, what's the conflicting information? The conflicting information is on the New York's website. It says absolutely no tests, 100% you must be vaccinated. On the Arkansas consulate site, it says that you can take a test. So it's conflicting information on the government's websites here in the States. Yeah, what I've done is this, um, 
reach out to both of my tour guides there in Ghana. And that's what um, they have confirmed. And also went on their website and they want us to take a COVID test. So that's honestly the best I can tell everyone. Um, it's the same thing we've been dealing with in December and May. And that's why I removed Ghana from the schedule to where it's just after this December, I'm only going in May because it's just honestly too much to deal with, even with the visa. So I'm gonna tell you about this, you know, do your best to just flow with what we're saying and uh, we'll get you there. So let me get this straight, Romani. If you're fully vaccinated, you don't need to take the PCR test, right? That's correct. Okay. And, and that's as per my people there in the country, but like our sister was saying, there's conflict and information. So once you have conflict and information, I gotta get to the source of this reaching out to the airlines and reaching out to the people that we have in the country and then also checking to see who have traveled recently. So with Ghana, I just honestly, I'm, I have to do that, especially like December every week. Uh, so, um, but as far as what I'm saying now, that's the best I can go by now. And once I get back from Tanzania, we can just focus on what we can do, but um, I don't really know what to tell folks other than I'm just, I don't know what to do with Ghana. You know? um, I hope everything work out good and, you know, the, the, you know, the country just don't turn upside down, but they have turned away a lot of people. I've sent people to the country and they weren't able to get to the country. Like I said, you know, I usually work with small groups of people and send them and connect them. And I've just never seen anything like that. Like I can't say I've sent people to other countries and they have had issues with trying to get to the country. So it sometimes even depends on the airlines. You know, you talk to the airlines and they say, well, I haven't gotten updates and things like that. So. That's what, that's what I'm giving everyone my word down that I will do. And then I will ask everyone to do the same, especially with the airlines they're traveling with, to make sure that the airline has a clear policy of what they want you to do because they have to let you on their flight. All right, greetings. Uh, uh, Dr. Z, you have a question? Or Catrice, do you have a follow-up question or anything? I no, I don't. Thank you. All right, excellent. Um, I did have a question. Do we have to uh, do a malaria malaria uh, pill? Did you say they have a mosquito issue? Uh, that's up to you for malaria. Uh, I was just saying, people, that uh, as far as mosquitoes, you want to bring you want to you know bring mosquito spray, and then if we're going out to eat at night and we're on the outside, which a lot of times we're eating outside, uh, you want to just cover up your you know just cover yourself up as best as you can. Thank you. Guys, family, the line is open. I just went over our 30-point preparation for basically all of our tours and this overview of all of the documentation. So, all right, and if no one have any questions, I'll just keep talking about Tanzania. Let me pull up our Tanzania information. Or, or since uh, we're traveling to Tanzania, uh, so family, we leave November 17th, so make sure you have all your stuff printed out, make sure you're clear on your schedule, make sure you keep up with it. As I mentioned, uh, just create your login for, you know, for Delta, KLM, and just that's the best way to manage your flights. But the goal is us, for us to meet up and for us to issue out the... Uh, Africa for Africans t-shirt, uh, pens, bags, and I'll do my best to try to get this book printed. Uh, but if nothing else, uh, it will be a digital version because that's what we're moving to anyway, unfortunately. Um, sometimes it's too much stress to have a book and have it printed in time when you're trying to finalize on certain things on a schedule. But nevertheless, this is my last Tanzania book and I've been uh, editing it for the new version. So that's another thing to have, um, have sample digital books right there on the website. It will say tour books. And once you click on it, it becomes a flip book and you can also download the file. And that's especially good for those who you know, want to see what uh, the full program looked like because it's a program book. It talks about all the sites to give introduction to the guides and the people that we're working with, the hotels and so on. All right, so family, line is open for our questions. 
as we get ready to travel to Tanzania 11 days from today. And uh, good morning. Hi, this is Nikki. I'm calling. I'm going on the Tanzania trip, and uh, uh, I noticed on the uh, AMS when I went to the KM, KLM site in, in the 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 to uh, Kilimanjaro is that that they, they show that there's they have exceedingly long waits. So what is what are they? Because I didn't read a lot. I did read something about some. Uh, they were they had some type of a I don't, I don't know what they call that um, strike of the workers a while back. Do you know it? Wouldn't they say check? We have to check into the weights. Do you know what's going on with that? Or I'm not sure what you mean with check into the weights. You have additional to, information. Well, it would be ideal if you were. I'm not clear on what you well, said. They, if, the, they have, if they have a strike a while back, um, I mean I don't know what to say. I mean, but. You, you can check your flights and what's going on in the country ahead of time. And we're still 11 days out, but there's nothing that I've heard or anything. Um, so the only thing I could tell everyone is, you know, is, is just flow with your airline schedule and we all just meet up where we need to meet up at. And once we're in, uh, once we're in Kilimanjaro, we're all getting off of the same flight and our people will be there waiting for us. Uh, but um, uh, you said something about a layover. That's the part... Um, I really had a question about because we do some of us do have long layovers and I'm not sure the definition of long layovers is two to four hours. Okay, maybe that's okay. Um, and also, do you no, know, no. I'm still not able to get past the uh, going. You still not able I didn't to get your email yet either. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's the, the email is the same email that you had. Yeah, unfortunately, I do apologize. I just the the hardest thing is having a recent information. So what I was hoping that you do is it's the same information that you have. I did look on it online, but the, so the, okay. once you example I, example okay. what I want I'll review it and like you said. No example. What I want and I want everybody to bear with me on this. Everyone, if you have a confirmation number, please log into KLM or Delta. And once you log in, you can email yourself or you can send yourself a PDF of your schedule. Um, so, and that's what I wanna explain because um, I wanna limit myself having to do these things because I do wanna work on what we need to work on and dealing with a ticket should, you know, shouldn't go up into this time frame. Uh, so, but uh, I did check your ticket, uh, it looks normal. If you can tell me something specifically wrong with it um, and because your schedule is different from our schedule, but the common flights are Amsterdam to Tanzania and then Tanzania to Amsterdam. Uh, so whatever the flight, the flight numbers are, they don't necessarily have to match up with the flight numbers on our itinerary. Uh, what we have on the schedule is things that sometimes you have to change because once the airline changes the schedule and the flight dates, uh, sometimes you don't always get to change those, but I want people to look and focus specifically on their schedule. And then also it does show it does show three uh, six uh, flights on yours. So let me know if you log back in and if you didn't see something. Okay, yeah, I just did before the conference call. I'm like, I didn't it stops at the, uh, Amsterdam to um, Kilimanjaro. It stops there, and I don't get any return flights. But I'll look at the airlines a little more closely. Um, and because you the end result is that you want. We are to be printing our tickets and have physical copies. It's not all, even though we have e-tickets, we still need physical copies. Yeah, I mean, you're sure, I look, you're sure you didn't look at six legs? I mean, it's easy to look over the flight information. Yeah. Yeah, I'll double check. And like you said, I'll, I'll, I'll call the airlines if I have a C first, make sure that they have me down too as well. Um, so, as you mentioned but, to me that your, the flight from 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 Dar es Salaam to Amsterdam. You mentioned it wasn't on there. That's what you mentioned first. Yeah, that one is not showing at all. It showed on my original itinerary that I printed for KLM. It's never shown for Delta. Delta never mm -hmm. had it, which you said it could show up one place or the other, which I understood that. I didn't know that's how that worked at first, but I do have, I just don't have the uh, return flights from Dar es Salaam to Amsterdam. All right, uh, you know what, I uh, see it on the itinerary, but I don't have a ticket to match. 
So you say show on five legs. All right. Um, that's uh, very strange. All right. You said you're showing it, but I, I can't see it on my end. I don't know why I'm not able to see it. But well, I can, I'll look in more detail. I'll keep looking in before I, from, I was trying to print the tickets out and, and that's where it stopped at. Okay, thank you. All right, klm.com. So perfect. What I'll do is the... So yeah, so um, Nikki, I'll get back to you after the call and uh, we'll get uh, whatever worked out and we'll, I'll get in front of my computer and get in front of yours and we'll just look through it. So anybody, if you're having any similar issues like this, uh, the best thing for us to do is just uh, reach out to me and I'll get in front of my computer and you get in front of your computer. And then after that, if we need to talk to the airlines, we'll talk to them and they'll work things out, especially in a situation where you're trying to select seats and you can't and the seat is a open seat and it's not a upgraded seat. So things like that may be going on. So at that point, uh, definitely reach out to me so we can just get it done. So I got you, Nikki, and we worked that out. Uh, is anyone else having, uh, while we're talking about tickets, anyone else have anything uh, on their ticket that they have their question about or if they, something is missing? All right. So perfect. And also for the, those who are traveling with us uh, to Tanzania, did everyone get access to their domestic flight on Precision Air? Uh, and also note that some of those tickets are booked with maybe four or five people. So what you do is just print your own ticket. You know, you just, when you click on print, just um, select on whichever page your, your ticket is and just print that ticket only. Unfortunately, uh, sometimes we have to do the, uh, the group bookings like that as far as domestic. Oh, Mr. Bomani. Hey, greetings, Akubi. Doing, uh, doing yeah. well. Just getting ready for Tanzania. And yeah. As far as the Ghana trip we went on May, we had an excellent time for this, uh, Sister Z. Once she finally get there, she'll have a wonderful time. Because you know I was there two months extension. Um, I'm looking forward to our trip to Gambia and Senegal. And also, you know, I'll see you back in Ghana in May. So you're going to be on in May again? You're moving there? Well, another two months. I'll be back. You know, that's a whole different thing. You know what we talked about, but um, I'll talk to you later another <laughs> time with that. Just mainly I have to go and get my um, visa for um, Gambia. You're talking in secret codes? <laughs> well, you, know how, you know how Scorpions roll, so, you know. So I'll be talking with you later. In the Absolutely. You ready for Senegal, Gambia? Yes. That's just the Z. She will get ready for Ghana. She's not ready. She will get ready. <laughs> I am ready. Okay, good. <laughs> That's good. I've been going just since 1980. Okay. <laughs> yes, Akubi. Uh, Akubi, you just, you're just ready to get off. Share some of your experience. You, you know, you, you're on so, live. But, yes, yeah. We, <laughs> I mean, beyond, okay. this, beyond this, your uh, experience, I mean, honestly, just, uh, share some of your recommendations. I always try to get people to give information on uh, you know, especially most people that uh, travel with us you know, have never been to Africa or have been to Africa once or twice, and you've been everywhere. <laughs> no, just a few places, that's all. You know, I'm shy. Well, does she have a question, a specific question I'm willing to answer? No, I'm just, uh, just you know, if you have any recommendations in general for anything in general, uh, you know, you know, uh, especially traveling and moving and flowing with the group and you know, keeping up with everything. They'll get flow with the group, get to know people, make contacts, make connections. It's about mainly connecting. And there are some fantastic people there to connect with, and they will help you and vice versa. Be yourself. Great. Be willing to learn and to listen. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Get in where you fit in, like Go Black says. <laughs> Yeah, this, uh, Would we be able to um, get any, go to the market for like material and get some garments made? All, all over the place. <laughs> yeah, it's, these, yeah, these are the things that we do. And bargain, bargain, bargain. You see like you have a gift for gab too. So if you got a gift for gab like I do, <laughs> there's <Yeah>. no limit. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome.
Yes, Akubi. Yes, Akubi. Appreciate your energy. Appreciate your energy. Thank All you. Right. All right, so family, does anybody have a question? If not, what I want to do a quick screen sharing, uh, screen sharing of klm.com. Uh, Nicola uh, just sent you an email from their website. Uh, what I want to do is um, I want to share your flight, inf your flight details as a way to, to explain it to everybody else. So I'm going to do okay, screen sharing you. on your flight. It's only your name on there, so it's no other uh, private information being shared or anything. Okay. All right. All right, so family, I am uh, where we are with this. All right, perfect. Uh, Nicole, can you see the ticket? The... Yes, I can. All right, I see what you, that's what I was looking at. I'm going to go there too. Yeah, well, perfect. All right, so family, uh, let me. So once you log into KLM.com, uh, you go to My Trips and then you put your booking code in and your last name. So, right. so I did that for um, Nicole um, and this and this is also for everyone. And since this is the most, this and Delta is the most popular website we use. So you have uh, Indianapolis uh, to Indianapolis to uh, New York, right? Yep. And then New York to Amsterdam. And in a, in a, Did you put my booking code in there? Uh, that's yes. what I've been using. All that's right. Your, yeah. uh, so when you see the layovers and I'm trying to see the layover. Layovers are about, usually we have layovers from anywhere from uh, one and a half to four and a half hours. So this mm -hmm. one uh, in Amsterdam is usually long. And then from Amsterdam, we go to Kilimanjaro. So those are three legs right there. And in between, it shows the, you know, your connection, your layover. So that's how you hand, so that's how you see the layout on your outbound flights. So what it will show is it will say Indianapolis right. to Kilimanjaro. And then the next thing it will show is right. Dar es Salaam to Indianapolis. All right, so we click on Dar es Salaam. And then Dar, Dar es Salaam. Where are you at now? Are you, can you see the screen? Okay, I'm uh, let me yes. go back up. Uh, so uh, right I, here where it said please provide valid travel documents you have the outbound flight from indianapolis to kilimanjaro right. and so I, we just right. looked through all three of those flights then the next thing is dar salaam to indianapolis so once i click on it then it loads up the return flight so we leave oh, uh, you click on this oh oh lord i did not see that no it's all good oh, that's why you. that's why no, that's why I'm just going through it because just if trying to get everybody. Walk me through that. I never would have seen that. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness! Thank you. I did not see that tab. Okay, I got it now. Thank you. I put perfect. I still I go through because it. everything is just for the recording of presentation. So, so now you and when once you go down Dar es Salaam to Amsterdam, and then you have the two-hour connection, then Amsterdam to Atlanta. And you have a two-hour connection, and then Atlanta to Indianapolis. Indianapolis. So That's these are it. so these are the flow of how we just create schedules. I try to make sure we create them to where we have a nice flow and you know good connection time, as best as possible. So that is our KLM.com website. And then oh, as far as the baby. seats, family, sometimes <laughs> you click on seats, and you may see that a seat costs a certain amount of money. That's just KLM offering you seats for you know to select seats priority so that's it's the, like it would say seats from zero dollars so if you can see some seats that you want that you don't have to pay additional money for you you can get those seats but if you want to do the upgrade or you want to do the early seating you can do those things it's uh you know it's okay. their klm european system that they use and i you know i just had to get used to it because they have the best routes for all of the tours that i need and they have a nice convenient location in amsterdam Connect us. Thank you, Bamani. I appreciate that. I'm so sorry. You I've are been welcome. A dumb <laughs> no, nothing to worry about. No, I just said uh, not, these things are like the visas, all those things. These are not things that people normally do every day, things like that. Uh, so that's why I'm always just trying to go through it, especially on, on screen sharing. So perfect. So family, that is so that is uh, one of the view of one of the bookings and on Delta Airlines. Um, Delta Airlines is a little simpler. They have everything on one page. You don't have to click to see the return flights. 
Brother Momani. Hey, greetings, Akubi. Yes, uh, I thought of something. Um, the sister that's going by um, Amsterdam, did you say something about she has a long layover, about five or six hours? No, I was uh, layover is four hours. Oh, okay, because the reason why I say that, because I've been to Amsterdam, you know, many times in the past, and you normally, if she want to leave at the airport, you know, she can always go into downtown um, Amsterdam, Amsterdam and get like a day pass. They used to have like a day pass and she could go to another part of the area, like The Hague, for example, or she can go um, on the boat tours down the canals and see, you know, the different houses that are, you know, by the water and everything. So it's a lot of the different things she can do if she don't want to just stay in the airport. That's just- Absolutely, um, yes, yeah, she doesn't have enough time to do that. Uh, uh, Cause I've I done it with the four hours. That's what I said. Because that before like Emirates and all those were big time. That was the way I used to go to Ghana. After they got rid of Ghana Airways, so I would go that route. Okay, I'm, yeah. so I'm very familiar with that. That's why I mentioned that. Yeah, yeah for people who are well experienced, uh, they can do that if they want. Um, um, you know, just the one. Well, it's not my responsibility that people miss their flights, but I wouldn't recommend that. Um, it's been times that we had eight hours and we just go out and hang out. Uh, you know, hang out in Amsterdam. We've done it one, once or twice and put our stuff in the lockers and things like that. So that wasn't uh, you know, bad. Oh, you put in the lockers. <laughs> yeah, I remember those lockers. Hmm. Yeah, put in the lockers and, you know. Yeah, I hate to do this. <laughs> and then yeah. if they collect your bags in a baggage department, you tell people to, to keep it this simple. Make sure that all of your bags are locked and make sure that, you know, and things like that. Right. You know, you know, because uh, once you have things in a storage area, you know, you have crazy employees. Now they just go look to see which bags are open and then whichever one is open because they don't want to do forced entry. They just, you know, and things like that. So um, and once again, you know, all the things I would share is always based on experience. Uh, that didn't happen to me, but it did happen to somebody else because that's why I got all these locks on all the bags and everything. Um, because, you know, it's one of those things, you know, especially like, you know, hotel. Sometimes you have to tell people, this, I mean, I don't know what to say, just lock your bags. Um, and you know, it's, no one's going to go clip your bags or do a forced entry. So once you lock it, you know, you push the person away from, you know, messing with your bags. All right. Uh, Terry Galaxy T, uh, go ahead with your question and let me just mute you, Nikki. Oh, there you go. Greetings. Oh, Teresa, greetings. Uh, this is your name. <laughs> uh, for greetings. Uh, you, ready for, you ready for Senegal uh, Gambia? <laughs> for Gambia and Senegal, when are you going to do the private uh, WhatsApp or this sort of thing? No, I have the WhatsApp group. But most of the After time, uh, South Africa? No, I mean, that trip don't leave until uh, March. So, I mean... Uh, so, yeah, but what you look, what? <laughs> yeah, you're spending most of your time trying to get. Okay, well, the visa is painless. Uh, I already have that mm -hmm. for uh, Gambia, and no visa is needed for Senegal. And uh, what about vaccines or anything like that? Anything uh, they like don't have that? any COVID requirements. Ghana tends to and be the only country with this crazy stuff, and it's driving me crazy too. Oh, it's just Ghana. Yeah, it's just Ghana. That's why I got all these new schedules because. You know, I'm afraid that I wake up one day and then nobody want to go to Ghana anymore. Because, okay. Because okay. it's just the, the mindset of the things that, you know, people just used to go into a country with visa and coming out. Like, so this, this pandemic era is over. You know, people just want to get away from all those things. Okay. And our currency in Gambia and Senegal, are we going to have somebody on the ground or do we need to worry about that in advance? No, it's never a warrior issue. It's a simple thing. We just take you to the Forex Bureau and we take you to a location uh, with ATM machines and we can do that every day. Right, for ATM or, 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 or every other day. Always let people know the ATM machines, the rate change every day. Let folks know that because some people don't know that today the rate exchange rate is this amount and tomorrow the exchange rate is another amount. Ah, so that's why I'm concerned about currency exchange for Gambia, Senegal. Because as you know, I have bought currency with me to Africa before. We have traveled together. We're not new to each other. When in, in South Africa, <laughs> you do have that option to get currency from here. But uh, while you're there, um, you know, just, uh, you just your whole new goal is to just either get people to access to the Forex Bureau and they can change their money every other day or the same day. 
um, or and also someone that's going to change their their bills if we travel. And then beyond that, the AT machine is the next option and things like that. So uh, yeah, people have to think about the bank rich, charges. Rich people, yes, that could. Oh yeah, the bank charges, bank charges and the different fees and <laughs> exchange rates. So it's a wonderful thing. Okay, <laughs> so with school supplies for Gambia and Senegal, are we still doing books? uh black dolls this sort of thing or is this something different we're doing oh no something i always do i got schools in all these countries let's bring school supplies i get them so out. we're still doing school supplies i take it right to the school and we give them to the children and give the donations right there on the spot okay all right all right and all, and for all countries um the only thing is a gambia may have to find one for the gambia but uh we have one for senegal uh, but okay. uh, even even then, um, one or two things may change that journey. Uh, it's not that far ahead, but uh, uh, we have a setup already. But um, I'll, I'll be looking at seeing if I can add one for the Gambia. I have a good. Okay, uh, excellent, excellent. My new staff. All right, peace and blessings. Absolutely. Safe travels. I will see you next year. Peace and blessings. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, um... Bring some. Bring some of your friends on the journey. The more the merrier. Oh, I'm trying. <laughs> you know, it's hard with my people. You know this. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh yeah, we gotta we gotta we gotta keep on encouraging them. Yes. <laughs> yes, sister Kubi. Let me guess. You want you want to get you want to get my Tanzania T-shirt? Of course, two XL. You know the deal. You know the deal. That's hilarious. <laughs> the sister said that she didn't have any problem with the visa. Did she send it the regular way or did she do express mail yeah, the um, regular way? Yeah, there's no need to express anything unless you like give them money. Uh, yeah, away. because it was so far out. I, I got it in less than a week time. Remember, if you ever want to give money away, I got a whole community I'm looking to build. You know, I'd rather take I, I'm with you, for money And build it. Because <laughs> <we're> <laughs> telling, <laughs> no, it's just not, like I tell people, there's no need to do any of these things. All we're doing is making these entities rich. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, so just do your visa two to three months before we travel, the latest, and you're good. Okay. Cause I'm going regardless, you know that. I'll absolutely, absolutely, if you, absolutely. If you change, and if you change your mind and you want to go to to Rwanda with us or Liberia, no, those journeys are open. Liberia, been through there, maybe been later. There. <laughs> yeah, the life that uh, you probably been through is a different Liberia than yeah, the, right. than the, than the yeah. one that we're going to. Same yeah. country but different experience. Yeah, a long time ago, right. You probably mm -hmm. went right there in back in them days where, you know, you know what about twenty years ago? Mm -hmm. You were born then. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you were born when I went. You were born. Oh, so, you went, so you went into the eighties then. You went in the eighties then. <laughs> you were in this world. <laughs> All right. Well, um, it's a country we're looking to build a strong energy, and so looking right. to take that experience. Yeah, I, I tell you, some other people want to go to Namibia and Uganda. But we'll talk about that later, too. Hey, you know, it's just like Brazil. I tell people, like, why you took Brazil off the schedule? I didn't take it off the schedule. Why you took Ethiopia off the schedule? I was like, why do people ask me questions about things that are not, not on the schedule? I'm like, your family. I love all of them countries, especially Brazil and Ethiopia, two of my favorite countries. But a brother cannot get people to go. That's the truth. <laughs> yeah, I was in 95. You know, I was in Brazil in 1995. Brazil is this. <laughs> Tropical. Yeah. I, I, I can see oh. why the Portuguese lost their mind when they went there. Yeah, I was in Rio I mean, and I was is... in Bahia. Bahia is my place. Salvador de Bahia. Yeah, Bahia is nice, but it's like the the, the, the uh, it's just from the sky, not even the skyline, because the skyline wasn't there out uh, with you know when the Portuguese uh, invaded. But You're right. But just be, but to see all of the all the just the nature and just the whole Gulf right there, and just the beautiful tropical. You know, it's incredible. And then, uh, you know, sometimes you have mountains and the ocean and things. It's, uh, and then big beaches, big roads, and this. Only thing I can say, man, they party too much down there. You know, we're, we're yeah. like a Western culture tour, so we can't keep up with them. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but yeah, uh, Salvador, the history is incredible because you can just, you know, you it's kind of like you're putting the history together of, you know, of the Bay, the Bay Area in uh, Salvador, Bahia. Oh yeah, the Kilombos. You know, all of our Lombos. stolen African ancestors. That's right. She and you know, so I started piecing the history together. It was, you know, yeah. From the connection from like a country to Ghana. Uh, but uh, 
<laughs> but that's what I was there in uh, Brazil for. It was the Africa Roots uh, Brazil tour. Maybe if I put something else in the itinerary, I get a whole bunch of um, men to come or something. You know? The guy, he was surprised that that was my first time going there because when we started talking with the history, it was like with Ghana, when I started saying stuff, he said, this is your first time? You've been here a lot of times? First time. He couldn't believe it. He said, yeah, how did you know this, all this stuff? Because you because study history. before you travel. You study. No, I learned this. No, really, don't, no, don't forget, I went to all black schools before they integrated. And then I graduated from two HBCUs. And history uh, I mean, and stuff was one of my things. Are they going to teach you a history. lot about Brazil, though? Yeah, and it's stuff that I learned as a kid. And yeah. I retained it. Just like for Ghana, Kenya, all those places. I was taught and I learned and I remembered the stuff. That's the thing. So everybody wasn't brainwashed in this place. Everybody wasn't brainwashed. That is a that's mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. And you well, can't teach what you don't know. Uh yes, you know, but you also just you know recommending that you know if people want to know more about the country um, outside of our guidebooks, we have it you know, right. Put and some I'm time educator. into studying the country, uh, whether it's videos or with us reading. You know, example, we went to, we went to Egypt, and you know, um, it was a few of us, and not a few of us. I went on my own, but I met some people. They were doing the same thing I was doing. They brought books, and we're studying. Yeah, and you remember we know some of the same people, Renoko. And I was there in 2016, 17, and 18, especially Aswan. Yeah, that's it right there. That is the place right there um, uh, from, uh, from Cairo to Luxor to Aswan to mm -hmm. Abu Simbo. Mm -hmm. And you Abu know, they Simbo. have the new museum now. They yeah, built a new museum. Yeah, it's probably, uh, it's probably a whole lot of uh, change. So. I'm working with my, one of my good, um, you know, good associates, so I'll see how our Egypt 2024 um, journey comes along. Okay. So we'll say that comes along and set for October 2024. So we'll see how that works. So hopefully by the time I come back from Ghana, I can have that up on a schedule. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. as time goes along, as the goal is work on more schedules. So family, as you see the Tanzania shirt family, for those who missed this Tanzania journey, we're gonna definitely just have it around one more time. Okay. All right. November 2023. All right. So before we close, uh, anybody have any uh, questions? Uh, I guess everything is clear with everyone. Um, not a lot of questions tonight, which is always all good. All right. So, family, um, everyone, appreciate your energy. Thank you for joining and. Um, if anybody just needs to talk to me privately, just call me. If I don't answer, send me a message and give me a chance to um, connect back with you and then we'll talk. And um, don't wait too long. If you need to talk to me, just uh, reach out to me and uh, we'll uh, get anything cleared up. So family, everybody, um, once again, uh, this is Bomani. Ready to take you on all those wonderful Africa journeys. Uh, so you take care, stay tuned and please everyone that's like, uh, Stay in tune with all the updates on your WhatsApp. Uh, and if you're not in the WhatsApp group page, let me know so we can get you in there. And that's how all the updates are going to be sent, uh, especially in the last three months of our travels. All right, so you take care. Charlie out.